to love talks. Um, yeah, someone said, yeah, nature lover. Well, I don't know. It's also kind of convenient to go out and film here. And the first, like at the beginning, I was gonna do it like as a series where I would sit and talk, but it turned into this. It's just great, sometimes things can happen in front of you and the camera can capture it and things like that. But also because back in the day when I did the voice recordings, I would just walk and talk pretty much. But um, yeah, this, well, obviously yesterday exactly when I was like getting into it, like the camera switched off. Um, but one thing I wanted to relate to you guys was that I, well, I touched on it, but I wanted it to be, just wanted it to be clearer that we really need to like, almost like a satellite. I know we're not satellites, but as an imagery, like, you know, turn to the right one. Because I was saying, I was thinking about a satellite and then it's like, turn to the right right direction. But then I found myself saying, turn to the right one. Because turn to the right one. Because when we think of God and his energy and Christ's energy, like tune into that. Um, and there's a lot of, it's good advice to stay clear of like anything else. For our own safety and protection. Oh, I said it like, turn to the right one for our own safety and protection. Wait, because I wrote it down somewhere, so I don't have the exact words. But... It was cool because that for our own protection had like double meaning. It was like, for our own protection turn to the right one, pre protect it off other, from other things by turning away from them, but also for our protection, turn to God. There was another thing that came to my notice, and I read it, Dearest Lord God, which is, I don't think I'm saying it, but it was like, I wanted to, oh, I had this thought, like sometimes I don't notice that these are like, worth actually, like, that I ought to like tell them. But I was thinking, we call him Lord, right? But he's God. And I don't know if somebody needed to hear this, but it's like, obviously, and that's not his name, right? And he doesn't really have a name. And, but it's, it's almost like, because the Lord we would listen to. And we listen to God. And especially once you felt it, that love is like irresistible almost. Like, how can we not listen? But it's like the protection, everything we can find in Him, we can find no, nowhere else. And so, of course, Lord's in the, what do I want to say, universe realm, in the, in the, in the on earth, like humans. Uh, well, I don't know, it does not really compare, but if, but if you know, there was a really, really just Lord, because I know Lords on Earth, they may have been cruel at times, but this Lord is just, just, and nothing else. Like, I mean, other good things, but you know what I mean? But it's like, that's why we call him Lord. That's not really... I feel like that's more to him than, like, it's like, that's not his name, or that's not, he's God. He doesn't really have a name. I don't know why. But maybe because he's already everything. <laughs> I've wondered that at times, you know, but... It kind of feels like... He's already 
everything, then he's already all the names, isn't it? Like, I'm not saying there are his names, but it's kind of like... I wondered that, and I don't... I guess if I made it in my, in my own mind, I thought, like he created everybody else who has a name so it's like what if no name could encompass and capture his beauty and his glory and everything but he's already God and I know there's these I don't remember <laughs> how many exactly was it 90 names or 99 names or of God but these are just like attributes that he already is like the most merciful and everything like it's like we already know that that's all him but it's like and I thought that way earlier and I didn't want to like I don't know if I if it would offend anyone or not but, like can't not say things if it offends people but well, this is like like a description of him he is merciful it's more like a well, it's not an adjective, but it's more like that's what he is, that's who he is, how he is, I should say. Like, description of his nature, kind of. And he's God. He's already God. So what more can he be? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> not that this question is like borderline blasphemy, because it makes us think of... But there could be nothing else, so... You know, that was one thought I had that I hadn't gotten to say, but that was quite recent, so... And I guess I wrote some things... I wrote something on, face, on Facebook, pretty much, what I didn't get to say, like, after the video. I was like, when we say German, like, in Fahrtlein, I was like, just, like, because before, I remember, I was standing at this portion, I was like, trying to express something, and I wondered if, you know, because sometimes there are not only two sides to things, there could be a load more sides. I don't know if endless, but a lot more sides to them. And then we get to discover them. And then as our thoughts evolve, and it's almost like it balances it out. And I, I felt like I'd gotten to see the one side of the scale and then the other thing. I lived through it, I experienced it, I learned it, I, I put it out in energy and in thought, but which is also a new thing that I considered to put something out in thought, like, but I got to that in a second, but it felt like, I don't know whether, I was like, I really want to have said it, it was like, that's also really valid, and I wanted to show both sides of the spectrum, I guess, and then I didn't get to, to the one of them, and I got to the other, but... Sure, after you can always think, oh, I could have, I, I want to have done this, or not done that, or said, but it looks what it looks like and it literally looks like it because it's a video but those of you who have watched this but like then I really got into it later and I was like yeah you know I have this and this to say and the camera switched off and it's kind of like so I wrote it on Facebook so I was thinking maybe I could do a screen recording and edit it into this depending on how long this one becomes but there's a lot of things I was thinking like yeah that is I don't know if I can say them the same as I thought them then but that's a big thing to know. That's like the one thing to know. And I didn't want to, because who am I to like, I mean, obviously, I mean, everything he lived through was so valid and important, but it's like, it's almost like it peaked at that point where he died for us and he did come back. And I wanted to say his eternal, maybe his eternal soul came back. But obviously in the, all the accounts, his body was physically missing. But, I mean, I was there, I don't know, but like, he came back, his eternal, like he came back, He and it is like, it taught us eternality. It taught us that there is life to be found and, you know, our death is not the ultimate end and all these things, and, and you can dive into it more and find so many more things but it was like such an important thing and I never seen it until that day I was like wait that thing if somebody does not know that that is a big thing to know 
And I know there'd be a lot more to be said, but if I film what I wrote on Facebook and then you guys can like read it, put some music under it. Um, what else? Oh yeah, the thought thing. Because early in the journey I thought, well at least I put it out in energy, or I put it out in energy, which is already great. I never thought about us putting thoughts into the world in a way where, because do you know that phenomenon where you like, you've been thinking something and then somebody else catches on, or like literally like catches on, it's like, if you hear or find out somebody else thought that uh, maybe a little bit later or you know independently from you and it's like it's the same thing it's like let's catch on it earlier in my life my mom had the same thing and i was like i didn't want to like lose my ideas and i i love writing and i love painting and i always maybe a little bit too much but i always wanted to like capture all the ideas and i like, keep them so that i would get to implement them and I didn't get to all of them really but you know I always had that she would also say the same thing and I was like she would ask me to kind of be quiet and like let her do her thing when she was painting or this and that because I was like and I had the same thing when I was writing I was like I, I didn't feel like I could write fast enough and I, and I wanted to catch up and I'm like I have all these ideas and and later I read in a book teenagers but just like a storybook well not a storybook a book with a story in it. um it was written there something like ideas are like butterflies and i guess we get the that we kind of get that chance the moment to kind of capture them i don't know if it was written or but i imagined with one of these things with which you catch butterflies or or you know or they they're off they fly away they get to move on to the next person and so this one woman um explain it not even leo explained it like if something was meant to happen within this time that god was basically initiating it or you know inspiring it to happen if it needed to happen in this time then we get the chance to do it but if we kind of don't catch up with it then you know the next person gets to do it because it needed to be done in this time but even with the thought so even though because i i saw this um i can't even remember where it, but it was the thing that put me at ease with the other day when i was feeling like it kind of one of the things i don't even remember where i read it but it may have been one of the videos that i watched where you know Jewish people opened themselves up to what they call the Messiah and Joshua. So, oh, Yeshua, sorry. But it might have been there. I don't remember, but it was like something about like, don't worry about how it will find the people and this world, like what is needed will find whom and trust that it does. And it's like stuck with me and I began wondering, but how, when I think of some of the things I wanted to do and then I started thinking that I put it out in thought. Because like, oh, yesterday, yeah, there's something else I want to tell you about thoughts. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, because one of the things, thoughts and I th started thinking you know that the thoughts also get put into the world not only energy and oh something flew in my eye I can't believe it one sec please because we may be more likely to think something because if we catch on to these thoughts, then we could, could catch on to any thoughts, right? And I remember I was like falling asleep. Well, one is, so maybe it's doing a good thing even if you put something out in thought. Because if it's a good thought, you know, you're putting that into this earth. And we, oh, didn't I mention we affect each other? I was talking about wars at the time. So like we affect each other. Our energy 
and our thoughts too, so... And then it becomes a thing, as they say, like, isn't it? <laughs> and, and in German we have a different way of expression, because we don't say it like that, so it's like... When, I remember the first time I heard the statement, I didn't know that was a thing, I'm like, Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. To say that statement, I didn't know that statement was a thing. Now, now I get to say that I didn't know something was a thing. Because now I know it's a thing to say I didn't know that was a thing. But anyway, like yesterday I was like laying in bed and it's the kind of thing where, you know when you're like half asleep and you don't know that you're really thinking it, that you're what you're thinking? Because you're already like so kind of gone well you're not really gone because it actually was a really the thought is more with it than some of my waking thoughts but no it was like well I was still awake but and it was like it's kind of like a half sleep so I was thinking so that is why these things are put into TV I don't Sometimes I don't know, yeah, anyway, yeah, it was like, I was thinking about TV, and I was thinking, and, and we have a responsibility, I think, what our kids watch and things, because even us, because, but I saw it kind of like, because some of these thoughts in TV, or whatever we watch, is put into our minds, and now we thought them, so now they're here. That makes any sense. Because I was thinking of some of those nonsense. I mean, they're very informative, interesting things I've seen. And I'm, as you know, I'm, I'm on YouTube. And I, like I just told you, I saw this video of this and that. These inspire really great thoughts. Or really, you know, things that, like, really good learning things. But, you know... Sometimes, sometimes I don't know how to put these things because of those kind of things, but just when you look at something, maybe a kid's cartoon, as because you know our thoughts are like images, and I like saw this like cartoon thing, but it's what if it's not my thought? What if it's not something I wanted to think? But now you've already thought it because you saw it in front of you. It's like it goes on our brain. It goes on our minds too. It's like, I've thought it because I've seen it and now it's there. And I was like, put into this world this way. I wonder if you would swallow because... But when it's upon a time, I remember... And this is not for, you know, good or bad or... Is this good or bad or something and... Things are what we make of them, right? But, I remember this is a really, really, really long time ago. So, a friend of my sister's, and he was only in kindergarten, but I once saw him watch TV and he was literally like, he looked so transfixed. It's like he, was, he wasn't noticing that anything else around him. And I'm like, I think he, we asked him something and he wouldn't react. And I'm like, I was so kind of shocked as, because I was still a kid at the time. I'm like, how could this be happening? What is going on? But I I guess I thought is there something wrong with him? Like I don't know. But that was a long time ago. But I see it differently now, but Yeah, it's like put a thought in our brains and now it's there. Gedankenzwerge, my, like somebody when I was very young, they told me this word. It's like thought dwarfs, and I thought it sounds maybe a bit too out there to relate it to the next person, meaning you. But it's like it's like there is something to perpetuating our thoughts or not. We can choose that. And if we choose it, it's almost like, that person told me it's almost like they, they adopt a life of their own and it's, 
saw it quite spooky to me and I was scared and it's like, I know I'm in control, of, like we are in control of our minds, but things may sneak in easily, ego can sneak in, fear, doubt, worry, control and guilt. This Nadia Khalil always says that fear, doubt, worry, control and guilt are not of God and it's like a good reminder. Even the same with good thoughts, we can perpetuate them the more we pay attention to something, the more kind of powerful they become, the more power we give to something. Like, I don't mean, I don't want to, I don't know, I don't want to think like, oh, thoughts have power over us, they are our thoughts after all, but it's, we have a lot of input, that is great, we can choose, and this is not to, what do you call this? Like, oh, you can't think something sad because now you're bad and this and that. And then we, that's like going into the, there's a fine line between, but that's going into another direction of like, I don't even words are that. It's not about telling ourselves we can't feel what we feel or be who we are and all these things. Because sometimes you just need to be you. But it's like, Power. Like at some point, it's like we don't need to only pay attention to, say, you know, thoughts of anxiety, especially things that everybody knows. Like we tell ourselves, nobody likes me, and nobody cares about me, and all these kind of things. But before I ramble on, I just wanted to tell you, like, this thing that I thought yesterday and then I realized what actually a truthful good thought this was like a by good I mean a truthful thought that's you know helpful for me to know and was something I didn't know before because sometimes usually I think I remember from my so so to speak like old life I would have I don't know is it even you just think you don't even know you're thinking anything logical because you're falling asleep and I wouldn't have given so much credit to my thoughts at even at the time of falling asleep but now I'm like wait that was a really credible thought that's like that's what that was something we needed to know I didn't think I didn't think about it the same way before another thing I didn't think before but yeah it was um because this maybe Germans understand us more or something maybe I don't know but I understand now that when they said, but I didn't, I have no how to tell you, but like there was this video I came across and this nurse was crying with COVID-19 and she was saying things that would have been hard to like, that would be quite shocking to even to hear, to find the, if that was really going on and but of, and I thought, but obviously something in that was so concerning for her to have a breakdown about it. And I started thinking if that, but it made me understand our grandparents, because with Germany and the Holocaust, and they told us at school, you know, how could this happen? How could the Germans have let this happen? You're like, wait, I'm German. I wasn't even alive at that time. How was, was I supposed to? And it's kind of like I'm looking at, and maybe some of us, maybe many of us, and we may all have different opinions about it, but with something like this, with COVID, for example, we might think, you know, maybe one person thinks it should have been handled differently, or another person thinks, like, maybe we think it should have been handled differently. Maybe different people think it should be handled differently, but in different ways each. And, you know, we or anything but this is very current but it could be something more from the past but you know if I didn't like a certain president being elected but you do th we do think what but what can I do and then we do think we 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 don't know what to do and like we just kind of live and accept it and we think it shouldn't be like this or that and we kind of just accept it and then it's like it's easy to think oh somebody should do something but then you're like I'm somebody but then also we don't know what to do and 
we don't know if each other would support us if, you know, we did this or that. And, and it gave me a new perspective. I don't know how to, like, tell you about this video. It was pretty sad. And I have been really looking at, all, you know, all the positives I could find in this situation. But I guess I kind of, with that one, I was like, that's not acceptable to have to go through something like this. Or, anyway, I don't know how to tell it, but it gave me a new pers- What I wanted to tell you was the new perspective on our grandparents, who we would always kind of say at school they were like say you know we were told that you know and afterwards all of a sudden nobody knew anything about it and they would say how could that have happened right in front of you and then you didn't know or nothing was done and at the same time you talked to your grandparents we talked to our grandparents well my my generation's grandparents or somebody's somebody's parents generation I suppose or I know <laughs> um, but you know, it doesn't matter, but, and I would, I didn't, I would think, I'd, I don't feel like I was being lied to when once my grandma, who has since passed away, actually told me we didn't see anything like this happening, and, and, and I didn't feel like I was being lied to, and I, it had been a mystery in my mind, but this kind of made me think, you know, if something like, well, what the nurse thought was going on could be going on or could be enough, there could be enough of something going on to make her think that, then what do I know what our parent, uh, grandparents knew or not? Or, you know, it just made me like, it's not really their fault, it's so easy. Because first and foremost, who was at the forefront was Hitler. And behind him was the government. I always say I'm not political and everything and there's a lot of things I don't know about politics. What what I know about that, but being German, you are introduced to this subject very early on and um, in a way where it would norm in a movie or something still be deemed traumatizing and you would be kept from it. But in school, images and things are still being shown to an extent, obviously, but... And it's like... It kind of made me like... Hey, our grand... You know, it's like... I don't have to have anything in between us and our grandparents, like... We could still to love them and they didn't do anything to betray us or something. Because what do we know? And... What do we really know? Like, there could be a hundred things going on right now that I don't know about. And it's, it just, I don't know how to tell you. But, I mean, you know, see these houses, which I doubt that. But somebody could be suffering domestic violence right now. And you and me would never know. Sitting here, pretty much. Or me sitting here and you sitting at home. So, or wherever you're sitting. Or standing. Um... I mean, there could be better ways of putting this, but like, it kind of was a relief, like, so any Germans who ever thought, you know, how could our parents say that or this, don't really know what they knew, because the thing is, I mean, Hitler, I don't always, and it's like, he's so over-mentioned, and like, he's not the only person who did horrors in this world, I know these were very big horrors, but anyway, but, you know, it's like, I mean, who owns up to something like this in a way where we're gonna rub this under, under people's noses? It's like... I wouldn't know the effort it might have been put into hiding that during that time what was going on from the citizens because otherwise they maybe wouldn't have taken it. Maybe they wouldn't have liked it. So how would, you know... Because this nurse in the video was also thinking that maybe there's something going on in this time. 
that should be known it isn't. So that's how that kind of relates to Jill. And it's like, you know, and truth is so powerful, so freeing, and a relief. It's like, what's worse than anyone, that anything anyone could have done is having to live a lie with that because once we can face it, even admit it to ourselves, once we can admit it, even to ourselves, it's like, now you can begin to heal and it's like, not that burden to live with that and then you can't even tell anyone. I know this is like a mix of th themes and things today to say, but now we're at 30 minutes, so maybe that gives us some closure. Yeah, some of the things, like, it's so easy in my mind to think it, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to tell people this, but then when I actually want to say them, I'm like, mm, how, how will I tell this? How do I tell that? But this led me to a cool conclusion that I don't really need to think our grandparents were just mean or something like I didn't feel like I was being lied to like I've been lied to and I still don't <laughs> so all our instincts and, um, but, Because, I mean, it's such a thing, I and mean, we can argue for hours about whether or not something is true or not, but... You know. Because after it's done, it's too late. Now, the world can know these things, but... was not alive at the time. I don't know what they told them or not or what was very easily because you know we learn about these soldiers you know raiding villages taking people away